I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. And at the age of two, we moved as a family of three then, soon to become four, to Caracas, uh, Venezuela, where my, my father's from. So my mother's from St. Louis. And as he was doing one of his uh, postdocs as an as a MD, that's how they met. And, and my mother, uh, fortunately, uh, already spoke Spanish. She had lived for a number of years in Spain, in Franco's Spain. She's very interesting stories to tell about that. I loved it. Uh, and she um, also had the good fortune that my grandparents had always, um, for many years, had uh, foreign students stay at the house as part of a program with a, a local university called Webster College. Um, so my mother grew up with uh, Latin women and men when she was little and uh, yeah, took the leap and, and married a Venezuelan doctor. I, I still am amazed at her courage to, to go and live in, in, in a place that was little known to her being from the Midwest. Um, we, we moved to another town called uh, Maracaibo a few years later. That's where I spent most of my childhood, seven years and then, uh, or eight years. And then we moved back to Caracas. And by, the, by age 12, I was living in St. Louis, um, sort of once again, but you know, like for the first time really uh, in my years of cognizant, my cognizant years. Um, however, every single summer, uh, Prior to that, I had spent three months with my grandparents in St. Louis. And then when we moved to St. Louis, I started spending three months with my family in Venezuela. So for my entire childhood up until my teens and even then after, I produced the possibilities of always going back to Venezuela as, as much as I, as I could. And our, both my sister and I grew up in a very kind of hybrid culturally hybrid environment, you know, handling both languages from, from day one. And I think a, a big love for, for both the United States and, and Venezuela. Um, my first memory, I think would be while I was still in school in Caracas, uh, we went on a field trip to the Museo de Arte Contemporáneo Sofia Inver, that's its name then, it's since changed. Um, and Venezuela, was and perhaps still does have an amazing patrimony of contemporary art. Um, Sofia Inbert, the name on the museum, was a big part of building that collection. And I, I mean, Chagall's and, 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 and several Picassos and, uh, you know, a collection of Impressionist paintings. Uh, um, and then our local artists, which are uh, Jesus Soto and uh, Cruz Diez. And I remember very distinctly some of these kinetic uh, sculptures in the museum that, that impressed me. And I was at most 11 years old then. Then uh, later on, and I went to a, a, a college prep school in St. Louis called John Burroughs School. It's an excellent uh, institution. And we had art teachers. We, art was a big part of our curricula. So I always um, sort of thrived and really enjoyed that space, that opportunity. And we were taken on field trips. I went to a Sullivan building that's in St. Louis um, with them, not understanding much at all. But I think that was important. And, and then the, the, the other moment that was really important is as I went to uh, study as an exchange student in France right after high school. I, I lived in the city of Montpellier, which is in the southern part in Midi, the Mediterranean um, coast. And my first family, uh, Marie-Claude Bertin, uh, was then a uh, instructor of what they, what they call plastic arts or visual arts, um, also craft. And, and loves art herself. So uh, we drove up to Paris together and she just kind of did the rounds with me. I got to see the very first exhibition of the Barnes Foundation outside of Pennsylvania, which was presented at D'Orsay in 1993, without understanding much of what I was seeing then either, but um, it was uh, and a tremendous experience. 